Sometimes I think we forget how much we really have to be thankful for. I mowed a small path up to the ponds in the cabin, but the grass has been growing so much with the rain lately that I don't think you can hardly tell where it is. There's been some rattlesnakes killed around here lately, so I have to be cautious. I'm somebody that's kind of scared of just a general snake. And then we've got all this poison ivy going on that's just taking over everything. We've bought something to spray that. And that's one of the reasons I like to keep everything mowed down so that we have a path that is safe to walk on up here. Wow, it looks like we've got a bunch of bees going on up here in the trees. So I guess I have some pollinators if they just get over to my plants. So I wanted to talk today about how much we have to be thankful for. We hear a lot of complaining these days about everything, about the prices, about how difficult it is for everybody to make ends meet. And I've shared with you guys before that I'm the daughter of depression era parents, born in 29 and 31. And a lot of people talk about how difficult it is and how their grandparents lived, but I'm actually a generation closer to that because my parents were depression era and my grandparents were like 1898 and 1907. Here's our donkey trail. <laughs> So somewhere up the donkey trail is where Brownie is hanging out. Well, let's go have a seat and talk about how thankful we are. I told you that I spent some time with my aunt the other day. She's the youngest sibling. She's the only one that is still living. My mom has been gone for 13 years. My dad's been gone for 14 years. And she was sharing with me some of the upbringing of my mom and of her. One of my aunts on my mother's side, who's been gone about a year, was also born the same year as my dad in 1929 during the largest stock market crash. She remembers the radio telling them about Richard Bird and how he flew to the South Pole in his little plane and put the first American flag there. Can you imagine how exciting discoveries like this were back in those days? Now we take so many things for granted, but back in the day when they would hear about things like this on the radio, it would be a big deal and it would be so exciting to have lived through those times and realize that you experienced something that was making history in the years to come. I love coming up here. It is just so peaceful. So, so peaceful and quiet. I was just listening to the frogs a few minutes ago, but they stopped when they heard me talking. But my aunt said there wasn't really needs and wants growing up. There was necessary and unnecessary. And I think if we put things in that term, it's probably easier for all of us to identify the difference between needs and wants. There are the frogs. Kate, I hope you can hear them. But... Back in the day when they were growing up, you know, doctors came to your house or neighbors came to your house to help deliver babies. Um, they were all born at home, except for one of my uncles. And 
home remedies looked different. Medicine looked different back in the day. She said you had your choice between castor oil or kerosene. Kerosene was for cuts and injuries and wounds. And castor oil was basically for anything else. And if those two didn't work, you were just out of luck. I did lose two aunts that were around two years old from the flu back in those early days. And those were things that we wouldn't see happen as often now because we actually have modern medicine. They brushed their teeth with salt water. She said that was all that they had. Now, Colgate did make toothpaste in 1873, and it came out in a jar. But even when she grew up in the 40s, they were still using salt water on the farm to brush their teeth. She said they would strain rainwater that came off of the roof, and they captured that to get all of the dirt that was on the roof out of it, and then they would wash their hair with that and that it made their hair super soft. If there wasn't rainwater, they would go down to the creek, they would get water there, they would strain that out and wash their hair. Now they did have a hand pump, and if they used the hand pump for any type of hair washing, then they used vinegar to rinse their hair because vinegar then made their hair soft. Think how lucky we are nowadays when we walk through those shampoo aisles of all the different choices that we have to wash our hair. She used soap. That's what they used. My dad still used soap to wash his hair my entire life. Just bar soap. That was it. That's what he grew up with. That's how he continued to wash his hair. They washed all their linens in the same water. They had two rinse buckets of water, but they washed it all in the same water. And she said that it had a certain order that it had to go in. It was tea towels first, then sheets, then whites, then light colored clothes, then towels, then dark clothes, then jeans, and then rugs. Whatever they had, that is all washed in the same water in that order. And on wash day, they had beans on the stove, dried beans. Beans were always on wash day. You may have heard this before. It was something they could put in the kettle, not pay attention to, get their chores done, and eat the beans later. So that was very much the case with them as well. There was no local firemen. Neighbors would come to help if your house was on fire. That's what happened. There was just neighbors. So think about that if there was no firemen today. They lived in a four-room home. There was a living room, a bedroom, a kitchen, a back room. And the home was built where all the rooms had outside doors. And that was for safety so people could try to get out if there was a fire. When there was a tornado, she said she had no idea how Grandpa knew. But he would wake them up. We, they would all go to the cellar and they would wait until he said it was safe for them to come back out when the weather was bad. And he always kept an ax down there, so if something happened, he could bust their way out. I thought, how smart is that? You know, all these things that they did to make do and to be safe back before they had any of these modern conveniences like we have today, before they had firemen, before they had tornado shelters before they had basements. Um, I still live that way. I don't have a tornado shelter. I don't have a basement. I don't know why, but this house doesn't even have a cellar. So we don't have anywhere to go if there's a tornado. But she said grandpa would wake them up and take them down there. And I know my mom said at one point, grandpa woke them up in the middle of the night, 
told them there was a storm they needed to get to the shelter and she said by the time they got to the front door it had already hit and it had blew the chicken coop to pieces and blew chickens everywhere <laughs> they had three chicken coops but it destroyed one of their chicken coops but they were still safe they didn't move fast enough or he didn't figure out fast enough there was a storm so just think about that no television to tell you to take cover just instincts and then the biggie for me is catalogs were used for toilet paper at home and at school and they had outhouses and there were outhouses and there were two holers the two holers was an outhouse with two toilets in it those were the fancy ones we just had a one hole toilet she said and for a long time, I had an outhouse on this property as well. That was a one whole toilet. But over the storms and over the time, it has fallen in. So many of these things that we think about and take for granted today. And there's many more, I know. But those are some of the ones I wanted to touch on today to remind us of how thankful we should be. And I think about <clears throat> what my house cost it was like eight thousand dollars <laughs> and yeah it's not in great shape but it's a roof over my head and now like the cheapest state i think is iowa to buy a house and they say the median house range is like two hundred and thirty eight thousand to buy a house now if i had to buy a house and that was the median i would never own a house i would never be able to and I'm sure there's lots of fixer uppers and rundown houses, houses with holes in the wall and roof damage that are out there for way cheaper. That's going to take a lot of hard work to get it where it would be livable. But that would be the boat that I would be in. I would be having to look for a house like that. My house still needs work. It needs a lot of work, but I'm thankful for it. It's a roof over my head. It's kept us safe during all these storms, even without a cellar. We are at the bottom of a hill. They seem to like jump our house, I guess, because of that. So whoever had the forethought to put that house there knew that that was a safe little dip to build that house. Yes, we get water that comes down the hill and sometimes it comes down the hill and right in our back door but it's still a safe house it's still a livable house it's still something i am extremely thankful for so let me know in the comments below what is something that you're thankful for today what is something that maybe you've thought about through this video and realized that you have more abundance than you realized that things maybe aren't as bad as they appear that maybe as individuals we want for more than we really actually need and if we went back into those days where we lived like this would we be the ones that were fussing because we couldn't afford toothpaste and we had to wash our teeth with salt water or would we be thankful that we had salt, fresh water, and a brush. I'm thankful that you all are here with me today. Thanks for listening to my memories, and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a great day.